seems to be hitting many of us in random moments in surprising ways. It's been weeks of change, death, trauma, vulnerability, loss, fear, threat, and protests. We have pushed through from crisis to crisis hoping that it would end, and an end is not coming soon. For many, our grief has been deferred, delayed, dismissed, and diminished. In this space of music and ministry and worship, you are welcome to bring your grief, your pain, and your sadness. Lay it at the feet of the one who embraces us, however it is that we show up. Welcome to worship, friends. Maybe you all figured this out, but I'm just waking up to the reality that it is actually summer. We are working to keep programming up and going, even though this is a time of sabbatical when we typically take uh, a time away from many of our programs, knowing that many folks are traveling to the mountains or the coast. We also know that life is upside down right now and offering connection is a really important way to keep us all spiritually in tune. Wednesday, Ellen sends out the updates of events and activities and committee meetings. And if you are not receiving that information and would like to, please let us know. We do have joyful news. At our last monthly meeting, we approved a new sign to be installed that reads, Undo Racism. It went up on Friday, which was also Juneteenth. If you are new to the holiday of Juneteenth, open up the 10 a.m. email and watch the videos about the African-American Independence Day. 
Moving to In the Light, we continue to hold our dear friends, Matt Yuri, whose father William passed, and Jackie Barons with the passing of her beloved son, Huck. We also continue to lift up each of you who are holding sad news, hardship, and pain. As we continue into worship, I offer this Franciscan prayer. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all God's beloved, everyone. Amen. Thank you. 
Friends, in our tradition, we pray to God our Father. In our U.S. custom, we celebrate our own fathers this very day, perhaps celebrating those who are fathers today. But more importantly, we attend to the relationship to honor our Father, who is in heaven. And so, before I bring the reading this morning, I invite you to center down and to attend to this moment and to our Father. The reading this morning is from Amos 5, 10 through 17, as read from the message. People hate this kind of talk. Raw truth is never popular, but here it is, bluntly spoken, because you run roughshod over the poor, and take the bread right out of their mouths. You are never going to move into luxury homes you have built. You are never going to drink wine from the expensive vineyards you have planted. I know precisely the extent of your violations, the enormity of your sins, appalling. You bully right-living people, take bribes left and right, kicking the poor when they are down. Justice is a lost cause, evil, epidemic. Decent people throw up their hands, protest and rebuke are useless, a waste of breath. Seek good and not evil, and live. You talk about God being your best friend. Well, live like it, and maybe it will happen. Hate evil and love good. Then work it out in the public square. Maybe God will notice your remnant and be gracious. Now and again, listen to God. Go out into the streets and lament loudly. Fill the malls and shops with cries of doom. Weep loudly, not me, not us, not now. Empty offices, stores, factories, workplaces. Enlist everyone in the general lament. I want to hear it loud and clear when I make my visit. God's decree, time to face hard reality not fantasy. Woe to all of you who want God's judgment day. Why would you want to see God? Why want him to come? When God comes, it will be bad news before it's good news. The worst of times, not the best. Here is what it's like. A man runs from a lion right into the jaws of a bear. At God's coming, we face hard reality not fantasy, a cloud with no silver lining. I can't stand your religious meetings. I'm fed up with conferences and conventions. I want nothing to do with your religion projects, pretentious slogans and goals, fundraising schemes, or public relation and image making. I've had all I can take of your noisy ego music. When was the last time you sang to me? Do you know what I want? I want justice. Oceans of it. I want fairness. Rivers of it. That's what I want. That's all I want. Now pray with me, friends. I invite you, loving God, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit that you walk with us in these difficult times so that we may walk in love and mercy. May the words of my mouth and the prayer in my heart be acceptable to you. And may we honor all the fathers this day. May we honor the Father, Mother in all of us. A few weeks back, I was walking with Jackie Behrens, and she taught me, as you all teach me, she taught me that in the midst of fresh grieving for the loss of her dear son, Huck, she had the wherewithal to share her shock and dismay over the loss of George Floyd. She spoke of feeling so angry at this as I do. 
Friends, we are asked to sing to God our lamentation. We are asked to be in relationship, in divine relationship, and bring a new way of being in relationship with each other because of it. Now, I've been serving this meeting now for one year, and during this year, we have taken a worship journey that started with a sense of joyful noise. I called it joyciness. We did sing, and we were gathered. Recollect that worship one year ago when our meeting for worship made that joyful noise through the ministry of music, prayers, and blessings, It is a bittersweet recollection for me as I now see our lives in all of the brutal challenges that we are facing and the sweet, sweet beauty that surround us today. Life is brutiful. Brutiful. First Friends Worship Journey is reflected in the life of our meeting as we've taken a past all this year, walk the paths exploring how we form the body of Christ. As the body, we are asked to love one another and our neighbors, no exceptions. We started one year ago with a reading from a letter of Paul's, Paul's letter to the Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God and not only that we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The words of Paul are as fresh today as they were so long ago. Now friends, the ministry of these past few weeks has been rooted in our commitment to our faith. And through our faith to belonging, we belong to God. God is in us and we are within God. God is between us and amongst us. And together we form this body, the parts and pieces of the body, including all of God's creatures, the waters, the land. Monica brought a powerful image last week as she shared encounter with crows in the midst of struggle. Theirs was a struggle of lament for a lost member of their group. And Dan and I witnessed another kind of struggle as we rested last week and saw miles and miles of beautiful North Carolina shoreline, there seemed to be very few birds, actually. The National Seashore Staff, a form of law enforcement for the vulnerable ones, has limited sections of the shoreline protecting nesting birds and sea turtles. We were able to see and hear one rare bird as this bird flew back to the nest. We thought it was a father bird. I don't know why we thought that, but that was the sense we got. Coming back to the nest after a morning of food gathering, and I'm told that this rare bird is an oyster catcher. I'd never seen one before. A tender white belly, black head, and a long orange beak. This is a fierce and beautiful bird. And the bird, this bird, will protect their young with every ounce of energy that they have. Jackie's conversation with me showed me that she would do the same. You would do the same, wouldn't you? If you were the family of Rayshard Brooks in Atlanta, you would cry out for justice. Friends, a terrible legacy has come home to roost in this country, and the time of reckoning is now, right now. In the Mountain West, the skies are red with flames. Billows of smoke are choking the people. 
These fires were foretold, the consequence of climate change. Now it's just scientific fact. In Tucson alone, there are 31,000 acres charred earth. That's almost 48 square miles. Raging fire scorching the fragile Sonoran desert ecosystem, fed in part by the planting of non-native grasses, the changing climate. The people there right now all acknowledge the heroic work of the 800 firefighters working to put out this blaze. And there are fires all over the West. We need to know that there are these people putting their lives on the line for our safety. There are many in public law enforcement that put their lives on the line for our safety. And yet, we also have received a devastating legacy of greed and carelessness. And we are beginning to see these consequences that no one wants to tolerate one second longer. There is horror in the eyes of the people and a keening grief that tells us the time for repenting, the time for reparations, is now. The love of God comes through each and every one of us as our communities struggle to examine how we have or have not cared for one another. And we've witnessed thousands of people, mostly young people, declaring black lives matter and demanding real change. And this can sound frightening without the larger context to help us understand what this means. Of course, we all want economic well-being and we all want public safety. We want health care and education. We want to feel confident in our society. We want a future for our children. But there are hard truths that we are being asked to face right now. Right now there is a movement which is led by those who take for their foundation the work of those courageous people who ended slavery. And the struggle today is as much about ending oppression as was the struggle to end legal slavery. Friends, struggle is part of our human society. With struggle comes suffering. The development of real character and hope can abide in the midst of that, in fact, be perhaps produced because of it. But we must lament for our blindness or lack of integrity. We must show ourselves to be in the beloved community of Christ. The prophet Amos calls for the remnant of the truly faithful to lament, repenting for our world today. This day we have a time of reckoning, a time for real reconstruction, based in our U.S. Constitution. In our reading we hear verse 13, decent people throw up their hands, feeling protest and rebuke are useless, a waste of breath. But the prophet goes on to say, what we need is justice. Justice. From verse 24, we hear the prophet speaking through the mouth of our God, our Father, do you know what I want? I want justice, oceans of it. I want fairness, rivers of it. That's what I want. Justice, that's all I want. On June 20th, some of us joined in the digital justice gathering with Reverend William Barber, who used this very reading from Amos in his June 14th sermon at the National Cathedral. We encountered the prophetic message of Amos in the 21st century, calling for us, us, the remnant of God's people, to seek good and not evil, and to live, and to work it out in the public square, and God will notice our remnant and be gracious. Our community might indeed be listening for what we friends have to say as we season a minute for monthly meeting, a minute of our witness, a minute upon which we can build a foundation of action for the individual or as our own collective action for justice arising from this body, our body of Christ. 
Friends, our Quaker tradition was born from the very similar lament and realization that we are being called to be exemplars of radical love. Here in a time of grief, of uncertainty that continues, that feels grinding, we are asked to be living in radical love. As friend John Punchin wrote, Quakerism was essentially prophetic and congregational rather than priestly or hierarchical. The Quaker way is radical in that it refuses to set divine revelation in stone. It is charismatic in that we give priority to the inward guidance of the Holy Spirit and we are prophetic, focusing on God's power to speak and act through us. We Quakers find our way in the midst of all these messes because we listen to God and God speaking through each of us, through the least of us. And if we are willing to submit to God's love, we truly make amends for wrong words or actions if we forgive and turn towards one another, towards love's call, then we join in that ocean that brings justice rolling fairness rolling like a river. And for this day, I ask, God bless this mess. We need the courage that Amos calls for and that Paul wrote about in the early formation of the church. God bless us as we take time right now to center down, to reflect on the demands we hear from the street for a moral and free society and as we listen to the people calling for oceans of justice.